God put me in a very interesting spot in life where he made hell my teacher. Mm. He made hell my teacher. And a lot of people don't understand that. So I'm trying to give people a different thought process of life where failure, hell, disappointment, discomfort is a great learning tool. And many people don't understand that. And a lot of people won't, won't even understand this interview when we get done with it. Be that we're all we're all teachers. We're all teachers. And if you don't learn something and give back, we, like, like like what you learn, what's the point of living? You're wasting. Yeah, you're wasting. You have all this knowledge of what you learn. Some people may think you're crazy. Some people may you know may put a title on you. But it's. It's, it, it is, you know, it's, it's those few people who are like, you know what, I need to hear that. Mm -hmm. And I suffer from severe toxic stress. And that was one of the big reasons why I started, you know, I had to learn this again. My focus in life was way off. I was afraid. I was afraid of everything. And when you have that kind of foundation um, growing up, and that's where you start life at, mm -hmm. is being, be, being abused and also working all night at a skating rink not going to school, and you have a guy who's an alcoholic, and the second he got drunk, he got mad. I didn't care about my brother, I didn't care about me, but I saw this woman go from Mary Poppins, the sweetest person on the planet Earth. And when you see your mom start to transform to a shell, to a person whose face becomes stoic, a person who has no emotion, and that changes a kid. Yeah. And when you're young, and you have to grow up so fast. So by eight years old, my mind was of a, of a 40 year old at eight. You know, my family, like life came at me. I started realizing more and more and more that all these people were gone. What was haunting me was me. I can't control my dad. I can't control the people calling me nigga. I can't control all these things, but they were things that kept me down. It started becoming my reality. My reality was what they made it out to be. And I became my own. The most important conversation you'll ever have with your life, you know, in your life is when you have yourself. Mm -hmm. And my conversation was absolutely horrifying. Mm -hmm. But what I did as a young kid is I observed everybody. I wasn't really smart in the books, but I was real smart when it came to life. And I was able to sit back and watch her mistakes. I was able to see how she struggled through life and how I don't want to struggle through life. And I was able to see, she never picked me up. The biggest thing she did for me, and this is the honest God truth, and she doesn't even know she did it. And I would bust my ass, and I would fail. And I was at the bottom of the sewer. She never picked me up. She never gave me that cookie and said, hey son, you know, it's gonna be okay. Never, she didn't have time for that. And sometimes she gets upset when I talk about my past because it, it, it paints her out to be not the best mom. If I had any kind of mom in that kind of environment, I would have never made it. Mm -hmm. Because she forced me, for every reason, she forced me to you better figure this out or you're gonna be a statistic. And this is something that she didn't sit down and tell me. I realized this. This is the world that is in front of me. And what most people do is they see this world and they look at it as an excuse to get out of it. I started looking at it as this is the ultimate training ground for the rest of my life. 